Hey students, um, Mr. Stalin, how are we doing? Um, I felt like this was a really good opportunity where we're at in science right now to talk about what's going on in the world with the coronavirus. Uh, sometimes you'll hear referred to as COVID-19. We just got done spending two weeks talking about uh, proteins, RNA, and mutations. And here we are living through uh, a virus that fits uh, all of those categories. So I do want to talk to you about this virus. I, I'm not presenting this information to scare you uh, or to make you think that it's not a big deal. I just think it's really timely and it's very interesting that this virus is currently uh, really disrupting our lives and causing a lot of anguish among people and, uh, and unfortunately a lot of death too. So I want to talk about it. I want, I want you to figure out, uh, have a good understanding of what this virus is. So I have a couple sites I'm going to take you to. I'm just going to be a follow along on my screen. And I will put these links uh, specifically to this first one on uh, Google Classroom so you can follow along if you want to. Let's see if I can keep my... Um, so I found this article on the New York Times that did a really nice job of uh, talking about what the virus is and how it infects your cells. So I want to walk you through this uh, website. So first of all, this is an image of what the coronavirus looks like. Um, these are the spikes that actually it'll make. These spikes are protein that it will form into an, uh, this is from a cell that it takes over. And you, you may have seen the spikes before, the corona, the crown. Uh, which is where it gets its name from. There are other coronaviruses that have been around before. In fact, if you read along with me, at least six other types of coronaviruses are known to infect humans. Uh, some of these have happened in the previous uh, years, SARS, MERS. And as, you, as we go through here, these diagrams are just really great because here's the genetic information, this gray line in here. So this would be your RNA, your DNA of the cell. Here is your uh, membrane, your phospholipid membrane. And then here are these spikes, these proteins that are made. So uh, I want to talk about how it gets into a cell. Now this is the virus here. And what it's looking for is a similar shape to latch onto. And that shape comes uh, from what we call this ACE2 enzyme. And an enzyme is just a protein. And this ACE2 is a specific enzyme that lives in your body that uh, has a shape that the coronavirus really likes. As you see down here, it will enter through the body, through into the body, through the nose, mouth, or eyes. And it attaches to cells in the airway that produce a protein called ACE2. Now, Again, ACE2 is an enzyme, which is just another name for a protein. It's actually found in the X chromosome, uh, which could come from either your mom or your dad. This is where the ACE2 uh, is found. So right here, if you remember uh, looking at our um, chromosomes, we have the X chromosome is where you actually find this ACE2 enzyme. Now, this ACE2 acts like a receptor. Uh, it, it acts like a, oh, like a transportation vehicle. And what it does is it will go through the airways of a person and it regulates blood uh, pressure. So if you're high blood pressure, low blood, blood pressure, ACE2 is one of these enzymes that helps to keep you balanced. Now, it all, if you heard earlier, it goes through the airways. So, when the ACE2 enzyme gets infected with the coronavirus, the ACE2 will still travel through those airways, and that's what typically leads to respiratory issues that people experience with this virus. Now, 
what happens here is that the virus gets in to the uh, cell. It gets through that oily membrane. And once it's inside, it releases its RNA. So here's the DNA, here's the genetic material. The RNA comes in and starts making copies. It uses this RNA polymerase, which you might remember from uh, last week with the website, and it starts making its code, just like we've talked about. But, but instead of your body making the code, it's the virus that's making the code. It hijacks the cell. It's 30,000 uh, nucleotides long. Remember ours has about 3 billion, so it is short. Uh, it's small, but it's actually pretty big for a virus. Um, this is kind of crazy, but 800 of the uh, COVID-19 coronaviruses uh, could fit in between uh, one piece of hair. So what do you think of that? So one little strand of hair, 800 of those coronaviruses can fit inside there. So it's super tiny, but yet for a virus, it's pretty big. It's interesting. So it's making its uh, code, and, and because it hijacks the cell, that cell then starts making uh, proteins that are infected with the coronavirus. And that cell will then go through mitosis, and it will uh, uh, divide and replicate. And that's where you have the spread of the virus inside your body. Because it's a virus, antibiotics don't work. Uh, <clears throat> really, you have to have what we call a vaccine. And we don't have those yet, but they're coming. We'll talk about that soon. So what we have here is the cell that has been infected. When the coronavirus is in here, it will make these spikes. These are the proteins that it will make. These spikes serve as a way for it to infect other cells. It's almost like uh, a sword that you're, that you're just constantly uh, uh, poking out of your body in all directions. And if you hit something, then you're going to infect uh, whatever it is you're touching. That's what these viral proteins act like. And remember, these are made because of the RNA code from the coronavirus. Uh, so it's making this, the genetic material gets uh, uh, divided and, and it's going through uh, mitosis and making new copies and new copies and new copies and pretty soon you have a bunch of infected cells in your body. Remember these are the types of cells that are going through your airways. So that's where we have the respiratory issues. Each infected cell can release millions of copies of the virus before the cell finally breaks down and dies. The virus may infect nearby cells or it ends up in droplets that then escape into the lungs. Now, what happens with our bodies is that we typically will have a fever. Uh, in severe cases, uh, it can start attacking the lung cells. And that's where we have our difficulty to breathe, that's where we get uh, signs of pneumonia, which is a uh, fluid in the lungs. And we can have these respiratory issues and possible death. How it leaves the body is through coughing and sneezing. Um, and that's why masks are becoming more and more popular. And in fact, CDC just recommended we all wear them, even if we don't have uh, the coronavirus. Now, what they're working on right now, this is the flu over here. So the flu is just what we get uh, seasonally. And we have these antibodies that are formed in our, in our body and they latch on. They have uh, a, a correct size and these antibodies, which is from a vaccine, come and find that, that flu, uh, or sorry, the flu vaccine will then find them and, and they will attack the flu bug, which is this big thing down here. And so these antibodies, the vaccine, they will wipe out the flu. Well, that's what they're trying to do with the coronavirus. This is the side of the coronavirus, but they don't have it yet. Vaccines take a long time, uh, 12 to 18 months. So what they're working on right now 
is to try to figure out how to make these vaccines that will then make antibodies that will then latch on to the coronavirus and kill it. We don't have it yet, but that's what they're working on. Uh, so if we can get that vaccine, we're going to be uh, really good. But in the meantime, soap. Soap destroys the outer layer of that virus, that phospholipid bilayer. If you look at this picture right here, you'll see how these soap molecules, these are the soap heads. Actually, let me show you this picture. It's a little better. There we go. So these spike proteins are here. The soap molecules come in and they attack that outer layer, uh, the... Uh, the membrane and they will break it apart the the soap uh, molecules and when that uh, membrane is broken apart all of the insides uh, get uh, taken out and they will end up dying because they don't have a host anymore which is really good that's how soap really does help with the coronavirus you just wash your hands with soap frequently it's like a crowbar prying open the in, the outer uh, layer of that uh, coronavirus and then all the all the bad stuff just kind of washes away so um, now we did talk about mutations and I wanted to briefly mention that this virus is an RNA virus and uh, what that means is RNA viruses typically mutate easily. Well, does this worry you? Well, initially it kind of did with me. I'm thinking, okay, if this is a virus that can mutate, uh, then how can we ever get in front of it? Because it's just going to change its, uh, uh, what, its genetic makeup, and we might have a cure for it, but then it mutates, and we don't have... Uh, we don't have the cure for that specific strain. Researchers have been studying this virus closely. They are uh, figuring out that, yes, it's a mutating RNA virus, uh, similar to the measles, uh, the mumps, uh, even the flu is an RNA virus that mutates. But what they're finding out is that um, the mutations oftentimes end up hurting RNA viruses. They don't quite have the checks that some of the DNA does. I remember when we talked about um, cell growth and the end of G1 and S1 and the S phase where we have those checks of DNA to make sure it's copied correctly. RNA viruses don't typically have that. The coronavirus does, but still the mutations haven't proven to be um, beneficial to the virus. Uh, one such article, let me pull it up here. This is from uh, NPR that came out a, about a week or two ago. Uh, the researchers here have found out that this virus mutates about uh, twice a month right now and that these mutations are not uh, very significant. So that's a good thing because what that means is when we get a vaccine, we won't have to necessarily start over because the virus has mutated so much. We are able to uh, work on uh, getting the proper drug that we need, the proper antibodies, and we can be rest assured that the, the virus uh, is not going to mutate too much. Um, that's about all I have. Uh, I got a couple things from NPR, uh, New York Times was where I had this from, and uh, Live Science has this video that we're going to end with. So let me play this video from Live Science. Maybe not. Recent reports suggest that the novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, is not mutating very quickly. So all viruses are mutable in that through time, their genetic sequence changes, the way they transmit 
their ability to transmit between different animals changes. And if we see that happening rapidly, that could mean that developing treatments and vaccines becomes much more difficult because if the virus mutates to become more highly transmissible or more deadly, it just becomes even harder to contain than we've already seen. But from what we've seen so far, and this harkens back to earlier studies as well, is that the virus is not mutating very quickly, meaning that once a vaccine is developed and validated, it is likely that it would be highly effective at helping to prevent more people from catching the virus into the future. There you go. So that's good news. That's encouraging news. So again, just to review, because I know I was kind of all over the place. Uh, coronavirus is an RNA virus. Uh, what it's looking for is that ACE2 enzyme protein in your body that regulates blood pressure, that uh, passes through airways. If it can latch on to that ACE2, it has a host. It's going to invade the ACE2 genetic material, and it's going to start copying itself. The uh, crowns, the, the, the spikes of it, will then... Um, show those spikes. The spikes of it will then infect other cells and pretty soon it's going to infect your body. Uh, and, and if it, if it uh, really, if those ACE2 enzymes uh, work their way to your lungs, it'll really affect your uh, respiratory airways. So that's what's going on with this virus. Um, this is a good website to look at. It's pretty simple in terms of not a lot of words, but yet gets the point across that yeah, this is a scary virus, but at the same time, um, we, we have proof that it's not mutating very much. And we, and we are working on vaccines already, and because of the slow mutation rate, the vaccine should be fairly successful. So if you have any questions, um, please email me or attend my office hours, and we can talk more about this virus.